Hello and welcome to Partridge in a Pear Tree with Miss Ashley from Nurture the Knack. Today we will learn about colored pencil, a simple drawing, and how to layer our colored pencil with watercolor paint. This is a beautiful technique. It allows you to utilize your colored pencil for low lights and highlights and to also color block in the areas what you want to paint. So it's like a little preview. It's a really great technique. It applies as art paper. So this paper, art paper, is a bit more texture than your normal printer paper. It is also thicker, so it's not gonna be as thin. So when you paint on it, it, it can hold up. It's also important to have a little bit of texture with colored pencil because when you're coloring with it, you want it to call what we have tooth. So tooth allows the colored pencil to leave a little bit of white background and behind, which is the where the paper is. Normal printer paper doesn't have this tooth. It's very smooth, so you won't be able to do that paint over technique. We also need uh, pencil, watercolor paints. I'm using Micador pan paints and I have a set of 24. I absolutely love these paints. I highly recommend them. They're my favorite watercolor paint for student quality. Got an eraser, a pencil sharpener, and a set of water, oh, a set of pencil crowns or colored pencils. I'm using a set of 48, but I recommend at least a set of 24. If you only have a set of 12, you just won't have um, a few different shades of red or green, and they usually don't have silver or gold in the sets of 12. So I do recommend having at least 24 colors in your set. Okay, so first you wanna grab your pencil with your white paper, and we're going to Sketch light until it's right. Starting towards the top of your paper, we're just going to do a curved line. You can see how I'm holding my pencil. This is allowing me to sketch very lightly. So it's just a curved line and then we're going to bring this line all the way around, nice curved line down towards the bottom of the page. And this is the bird's body. Next, we are going to shape in the wing. So it's an almost a mirror image of the line that you've just drawn. Very similar curved line, but it's smaller. So following the outline of the previous line and then coming down the back. So just another curved line meeting towards the bottom. So this is the shape of the wing and the bird is sort of overlooking its own shoulder. And we're going to sketch in some feathers. So two or three feathers on the end of his wing here. Now we're gonna draw a little triangle for his nose or his beak rather. So just a simple triangle shape. And from here, right on the edge, we're going to draw an irregular curved line sort of like the, the mask of his forehead, little circle for his eye. And I always like to draw a little highlight in. And they have, I guess it's, I'm just gonna do a little decorative detail on his eye. It's like a little mask or a band of color that will come down. And then they have this plume, this oval shaped plume on top of their head. It's a plume of feathers. So that is the basic shape of our bird. And I'm just gonna add some decorative details here on his wing, which we can do in a different color when we paint and color him in. Next, we're gonna do the tree that he's sitting in. So this is a partridge in a pear tree. And I'm just going to rough in some of the tree branches here. So imaginary line through the body, if you're drawing through the body and put a few different branches here to make your composition a little bit interesting. The leaf shapes are just an oblong, sort of pointed oval shape. So I'm just drawing an imaginary line of where the tree branch will go through behind the bird's body. And then just a few little branches up at the top and I'll add some leaves up here as well. 
drawing a pear shape now. So they're narrow at the top and then they flare out with a rounded bottom. So we're gonna do a few different pears around the tree. And again, an imaginary line through the bird's body just to indicate where another tree branch can pop out. We've got some negative space up in this corner here, so I'm going to fill it up with some more leaves and tree branches. And again, a couple leaves down the side and towards the bottom, and I'm gonna pop a couple of pears in here as well. Okay, so I'm getting all my colors out. I am using a set of 48. So to do your picture, you I recommend having a set of pencil crowns that have at least 24 colors in. This gives you a nice range. So you might have a couple shades of blue, a couple shades of red, green. You might even have a gold and a silver. So anything under 24, there's not a great range of colors. If you want to improve your art skills and to start really practicing with shading and value, I recommend having at least a 24 set. 36 or 48 is even better. So I'm going to add a couple different shades of green for my leaves, and I'm gonna do like a pink and red sort of colored bird. So go ahead and um, color it in. You don't have to do the same colors as I am doing. You can do any colors that you like, whatever colors are in your set, but if you wanna follow along, this is the colors that I'm doing here. So I'm doing half the leaf a light green and the other half a slightly darker green, so I'm just indicating some shadow and a highlight, and I encourage you to do the same. This is what we call value, or shadow and highlight. Now I'm going to trace in the little eye with a black colored pencil, maintaining his little highlight. Next, I'm going to trace the branches of the tree with a brown, a medium brown in color, and color these in. And the pears, I'm gonna do two different colors of yellow. So you could do a green pear, but I'm gonna do a, a deep golden yellow for its shadow, and then I'm gonna do a more of a lemon yellow for the highlight on the other side of the pear. Now the bird, I'm choosing this really beautiful sort of cherry red. It's almost like a, a bright magenta red color. And I'm gonna do this for his wing, his plume, and his the mask of his face. And get creative with your details. I'm gonna do some little line dashes here just to make his um, patterns mm -hmm. a little bit more interesting. You could do something similar, you could do zigzag lines, polka dots, it doesn't have to be dashed lines. Make it your own. And just by pressing with pressure, so I'm doing uh, heavy pressure to do the details and those dashed lines, and then a light pressure to color in the, the bird. So you can see, you can still see some white through the coloring in, so that's okay because we are going to use our watercolor paint and it will bring everything together and blend everything together really beautifully. I'm using a deep red, dark red, almost like a maroon or a burgundy, just to do this wing detail. If you had uh, watercolor pencil crowns, you could do the same thing and all you need to add is water. You don't necessarily need watercolors, but I don't have watercolor pencil crowns, so I'm using this technique to color block it in first, and then I'll go over top. So I'm just, with this dark pencil, I kind of like giving um, a little bit of shadow to add some value, so that's all I'm doing here, and that'll show up on the paint when I do the watercolor as well. For the light colors, if you have sketched in pencil line, I always like to try and erase the pencil line. You'll still be able to see it, but if you try to color over top of the pencil, you'll see it through the, the colored pencils. So I like to erase that line and then sketch in my colors. So I'm just using a very light pink here for the mask of his face. And then I'll use a contrasting color for his body. So getting your color, watercolors 
ready now. I'm going to use this really lovely deep rose color. It's quite bright so I'm going to make my own by adding white just to tone it down a little bit and I'll use this to paint in his body. Switching colors now to more of a deeper red, I'm going to do this for the plume and the face mask and his wing. Next we're going to do the yellow. So we've got um, a deeper yellow, golden yellow for the shadow and then I'm going to do a lemon yellow for the highlight on the pears. And I quite like that lemon yellow so I'm actually going to use that for the highlight on the green. Now I have colored it in with like a lime grassy green so by painting the yellow over top it'll still look green but it'll be really really bright yellow kind of that highlight so the sun is shining on the leaves and then the other underside of the leaf I will do a deeper green color. And lastly I'm just taking a medium dark brown to paint in the branches and that's it. That is our finished picture. You may wish to do some blue for the background but I like to leave it white entirely up to you what color background you'd like to have.